And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. You may not know it today, at the age of today, Stefan Feld and Uwe Rosenberg are the big name designers, but Wolfgang Kramer was once the biggest name in board gaming, and still should be because his games are quite good. And one game that he made in 1996 was Expedition, and I never had a chance to play it back then, but I heard many good things about it. Well, it's now been redone by 8th Summit, and it's called Expedition Famous Explorers. This is a redone version of it, and I went into it saying, okay, they've reprinted an older game. Let's take a look at it and see what it's like. It's a family game about the famous explorers that went out in the 17th and uh, 18th century, went around and discovered all the cool things all over the world. Let's take a look. Here's the board which shows a map of the world and this map of the world has different locations on it. You can see the different locations uh, are the names of places like Lake Chad or they're the name of different famous ex explorers like Hannah the Navigator um, or Michael Asher up here and they're also color coded and that's the color coding is just so you remember where they are. There's a lot of expedition cards in the game and each of these cards like you can see Bartholomew Diaz and Contiki uh, Nothing else in that card matters. The pictures and the text, that's all there for flavor. But the, the fact that it's green with Contiki will help you realize that when you're looking for Contiki, it's on the green section of the board. So I look in the green section, and there it is on the board. Now you notice that the board has all these locations, and they're connected together. And there's also some red dots and green dots on the board. And there is a starting location. We're all going to be starting here from the Scandinavian continent. And so players are going to be drawing... Uh, expedition cards into their hand. They're going to draw a hand of either 9 or 12 cards depending on the number of players that are in the game. Players are going to take turns placing out tokens on the board in locations uh, that, from their hand and they can put these locations on any card in their hand except for ones that are one or two spaces from the starting spot and those cards are marked so that you know that. So you're going to place these out here and, and you're showing everybody where locations are that you're trying to go to and those will score double. So everyone's going to put out four of those. There's also six locations up here which are public destinations and if you're playing with less than six players then you can use a six players color to mark all those spots on the board so that you know uh, there the Northwest Passage is up here and the Copper Canyon is over here and so you can mark those so that when people get to those they know they've reached a public destination. Now the gameplay itself is really simple. The first person when they go is going to take an arrow of one of the three expeditions. See this game comes with piles of arrows from the three different expeditions, yellow, blue, and green. And they're going to go from the start and they can put an arrow out any way they want. So let's say they say, okay, I'm going to start the blue expedition and it's going this direction. The next person who goes can start another expedition from the start space like this. Or they, you know, maybe the third person goes up here. But instead of starting a new one, you can continue one that's already started. So this blue one here, the arrow ends there, so I can go this way. Or it could have gone here, or it could have gone here. You can't double back, but it is possible for two different color expeditions to go side by side. So when you're placing these expeditions out, you're trying to reach the locations that you have or the public locations. If after your turn's over, you've reached one of your locations or one of the public locations, you reveal the card from your hand and take a point, and there's a point track down here at the bottom of the board. You'll take a point, and if it's a public destination, you will discard that one, take a point for it, and draw a new public destination that people are trying to get to at that point in time. If it's one of the destinations that you put your marker for on the board and you get to that one, you will get two points, double points. Now there are some special things when, as you're placing the arrows. If you ever place an arrow so that it points to a green arrow, green means go, or I mean a green dot, you can place another arrow immediately. It doesn't have to be the same expedition. 
If you place one so that it goes to a red dot, you will get a ticket. Now, not a ticket like you were speeding, sir, but tickets that you can use to do different things. There are several ways that you can use tickets. You can spend a ticket on your turn to get rid of an arrow at the end of a line. You often do that so that you can go a different direction with that arrow. You can spend a ticket to place an extra arrow out or you can get rid of one of the expedition cards in your hand, draw two new ones, and keep one of the new expedition cards. As you get to the different expeditions and score points over the course of the game, you will discard those or place them in front of you to show which ones that you've gotten to. And when one player's hand is completely gone, the game will have one final turn back to whoever went first, which is marked by the start player token, and whoever has the most points is the winner. One important rule of the game is when you're placing arrows, if you ever place an arrow so that it forms a loop, you can see here that as I place this arrow here, it forms a loop, you immediately must place another arrow and it can come off any point in that loop. So maybe I could put another arrow all the way down here at the bottom of the loop. So that allows me to, uh, loops, are, if you form a loop, you, it gives you a lot of power because you can kind of shoot off any direction that you want. There's also an advanced version of the game, and this adds a bunch of new rules. They're not very complicated. One rule, pretty simple, is that you can only score one expedition card per turn, so you can't hide them all in your hand and score them. Another is you can't spend a ticket to go to a red dot, a red dot on your turn, uh, which would give you a ticket back because that would be self-serving, doesn't work that way. Another one adds in Explore cards. There are seven Explore cards and you would uh, discard one of them and put the other six out. Players can spend two tickets to take these cards. Each of these cards will give you points, like this one gives you four points if you have scored the most purple expedition cards. Um, uh, this one here gives you four points if you've scored at least one of each different color. So these guys will give you points. Once you take one of these guys, you will replace it by putting an event card out. There's a pile of event cards, and these event cards can be uh, taken for only one ticket. They basically give you a special ability. Deduct one point from the current leader, <laughs> but you have to spend that there. Or uh, you can add, take it in the future turn, you can add two out there. Uh, this says, look at both secret locations. Well, what does the secret locations mean? When you play with secret locations, you place two of the locations face down. No one knows what they are. However, when you go to a green dot on the board, instead of placing out an extra arrow, you can look at one of these cards secretly. Ah, oh, it's Birkin Wills in Australia. And then you put one of your tokens on that. Players have two extra tokens for this purpose so that you can remember that you've looked at it. And then if you connect to that spot, like Birkin Wills is here, on my next turn, I go, ah, oh, ha, ha, ha. And then I'll score two points for getting a secret location, and it's replaced again with another secret location. So those are the advanced rules. This is a fantastically fun game. The thing I really like about it is how interactive it is. There are three expeditions going out, and you're sitting there going, okay, which expedition? Oh, and, and, and you'll constantly be yelling, why did you make the expedition go that direction? It was so close, I was about to get it to one of my locations. And it's really neat because it's like you're all steering one, three different cars. You're steering them together, trying to get it to where you want it to go. Now, I absolutely 100% believe you should always play with all the advanced rules. The secret locations are cool, the explorers are neat, although don't buy them too early because you kind of telegraph what you're doing and then it's a waste of tickets and tickets are useful. Uh, but the event cards are neat and, and I like the rules, uh, the, the two small rules like that you can only do one ticket per turn. It keeps people from saving their whole hand and going, look, I've connected to all my locations. This is the game that Trans America should have been. This is a fun way of connecting things. And the arrows. Now, you know, when I first got these arrows, I was like, wow, these, these, these little plastic arrows, they felt like a throwback to some 1970s game that came with little plastic sticks. And, but it, it's cool. And the game is educational if you read the cards, which you could do, and teach kids about the different locations and what the different explorers did. But I just got such a kick out of it. And the game is fast. It says 60 to 90 minutes in the box. I cannot imagine it taking 90 minutes. 60 minutes. Once you know what you're doing, 45 minutes. It's not that long of a game. And it's fun because every turn, even when it's not your turn, you are watching what the other players are doing. Where are you making that expedition go? Yo, I made a loop. Now it's going over here. And, ah, and, and using tickets. You thought it was going that direction. Now I'm going to take that arrow off and put it somewhere else. It's simple. 
The board is, yeah, because of the color coding, it's easy to find your things when you add in the secret locations. And, you know, sometimes you'll make an expedition go to a, a green dot just because you want to move another spot to get a ticket. You know, you'll, you'll move expeditions in strange places to get the tickets so that you can use them to do things on future turns. And there's a bit of misdirection as you don't want people to know where all the locations in your hand are, but you do want to get the expeditions to the ones you have face up. Pretty fun game. I was very impressed with it. Uh, this would be, in my opinion, a Spiel des Jahres winner type game because it's great fun. It's interactiveness without really being mean. I mean, because people are making the expedition moving away from where you want to go, but that shouldn't, they're not doing it out of any sort of malicious behavior. They just happen to move it that way. And you can always hopefully move it back or move one of the other three expeditions. Good fun. This is definitely an excellent game, one I highly, highly recommend, Expedition Famous Explorers. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com Shut the door! Yeah.